oh hey didn't see you there so well known fact about me i love figuring out the order to do things in like when i found out before cereal and milk you needed a bowl blew my mind so i'm taking it upon myself to figure out the ideal timeline to watch fate in now i know it's a bit of a big accomplishment but can't be that hard We're talking about the A Certain Series. The A Certain Series was written by Kazuma Kamaichi, a man who's apparently never experienced writer's block. Starting in April 2004, new content is still being made of the series, and holy hell does it seem like a series that's been going on for 16 years. Index alone has 44 light novels. There are also spin-offs of Railgun and Accelerator, spin-offs that have spin-offs like the Idol series, crossover events. This series is dense to any perspective to a point of near intimidation when you want to get into it. You know a series is big when there's an argument on the where to start. To avoid another situation where I... I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm just gonna watch each season in order of release. I mean, hey, that's how the original fans saw it for the first time, so it can't be completely wrong. That being said, let's start with a certain magical index. You'd think because this is like the core of the series, that this is the only magical one, it would be the most dynamic, it would be the most unique. You know you'd think. I'll start with the positives, because I didn't watch over 72 episodes of a show just to be like... Eh, it could have been better. In terms of world building alone, Index is a spectacle. We are in futuristic cities, crystal ships, England, Russia, and it blends everything together perfectly with its power systems. Which there are two. Yeah, two well flushed out power systems that go together and contradict each other insanely well. I'm always super questioning of a series when it just stops making sense or following its own rules, and in the same show we went from a villain who controls vectors of mental mathematic equations to Deadly Flower, and I was on board the entire time. Where interest kind of wavers though is with the characters. I mean, if they didn't get a spin-off, they probably weren't interesting enough to get a spin-off. The protagonist Kami Jotoma X more is a vehicle in between situations than an actual character. And all of his fights involve, okay, how am I gonna get over there to that person and punch them in the face? With the explanation that he has a power nullification ability in his right hand called Imagine Breaker. Not to say he's a 100% bad character, but a little growth would have been nice. I mean, the fact that his ability is nullifying all supernatural phenomena, including magic and science, it's really interesting. Then there's Index, who is an important character for about 30 seconds. Once she stopped needing to be saved, she was just kinda there. The title character ended up being mostly comic relief. She apparently has a perfect memorization thing, so she was forced to learn 103,000 important magical books, but that's hardly utilized except for a villain's motive here and there. Other notable characters are Hamazura, where credit where credit's due is really cool because he's actually a powerless character who manages to fight really damn well. Style kinda just exists to carry Toma through a few arcs for some reason. I'm terrified to say his name, but Suchi Mikado became the new style, but it's a lot more interesting. Because he was originally introduced as just some random classmate, so it's nice seeing characters evolve as the plot progresses. Index Season 1 and Season 2 were fairly enjoyable though, despite my complaining. It's kind of mindless anime junk food that you can see has potential. Then Season 3 happens, where... <sighs> What's the best way to describe this? Okay, like, imagine the story is this long. Now, uh, without, like, taking away any content, just like, yeah, condense it. Yeah, that's about right. This, of course, is by no means an original complaint, and I do understand the issues. If a studio could give a show more episodes, why wouldn't they? You can even see they tried to use every minute they could because they would skip the opening opting to put credits over the start of the show in many episodes. But it being rushed is still so apparent. That being said, I would still love to see New Testament animated. Oh, also, I love the Imagine Breaker noise. It is my text tone. Monster of a series actually comes from my initial interest in Railgun. See, personal aspect of me, I adore electricity as a power. I just love when it's used creatively, and that's the protagonist of Railgun, Misaka Mikoto in a nutshell. Time for a groundbreaking opinion that only the entire fandom agrees on. I think Railgun's better written than Index. That being said, Railgun has a much worse start. Not like it's terribly written or more boring or something, it's just uncomfortable in a way that anime loves to be uncomfortable. Very, very uncomfortable fan service. As a 21 year old man, I have no experience being a 14 year old middle school girl, but I have a lot of confidence that they don't act like 
this. Ah, oh, damn it. I know anime having fan service is literally nothing new. But I don't know, it just seemed to be extra weird this time around. Even to a point where I made a note every time something weird happened for the first nine episodes. That being... I just always hate when I have to second guess if I want to show a series to a friend for a silly reason like this. That being said, that is basically my one complaint. A certain scientific railgun is very well written and does a fantastic job at being a spin-off. The situations are never giant for giant's sake, like you can understand why the ones that never popped up in Index never popped up. But they seem major to the characters involved and I do gotta say I vastly prefer railgun villains over Index villains. Railgun just seems more grounded in motivations for both the good guys and the bad guys. I can't find a better way to describe it than just saying the writing is better the majority of the time. Also, the characters are actually capable of growing in this one, so that's a plus. Oh, it's about to get good. It's about to get so good. The last piece of the series that at least has an anime adaptation is a certain scientific accelerator, and there isn't much to say about it, then it's just so enjoyable. I did wait for this section to talk about Accelerator as a character, though. It seems like he was supposed to be a one-off villain that was really popular, and you know what? I'm glad. Accelerator is easily my favorite character in the whole franchise for his power and on-screen attitude alone. He also did have fantastic character development, going from feeling like he needs to be a bad guy to, uh, well, spoilers. Now, the actual anime itself is good for more than the fact that the uh, best character is the main character. Index is about someone saving the world, basically. Railgun's about someone saving the city as a member of the city. Accelerator feels like the dark side of the city, making sure the dark doesn't do too much damage. I wouldn't say it can stand alone like Railgun or Index, but it sure gives a great contrast to both the shows it's off of. The A Certain series is worth the watch if you're open-minded. Some parts are weird, some parts are boring, but it truly gives an experience that no other series can give. This is a dense fictional world that comes together perfectly and doesn't feel like it has variety just because someone went three weeks without sleep while brainstorming a plot. Oh, this again? Oh, don't worry, I've just had another breakdown, but... Working on another project, I think it's finished. I figured out how to explain the Kingdom Hearts series completely logically. Okay, you see, Mickey, he's a mouse. I think I have a concussion. <laughs> <laughs>